Today, we're gonna try some completely free tweaks to squeeze as much performance as we can from our e-waste gaming PC. It's about to get real. Stay tuned. <laughs> yeah, this thing may legitimately catch fire. So in our quest to get as much performance as we can from our e-waste gaming PC, we have so far upgraded the GPU, which gave us massive gains. And we've also finally upgraded to an SSD last week, which didn't really help our gaming performance much, but it definitely changed the way Windows operates. Well, today we're gonna go through some tweaks that you can do that cost absolutely nothing to help speed up your gaming performance. I'm gonna take for granted that your system itself is running like it should. If you have any issues with performance on the computer itself, those really aren't the subject of this video, but I'll go ahead and tag another video here that kind of goes into more depth on that subject. This video is gonna be specifically about speeding up performance in games with some tweaks that you can do within Windows. Now, this is gonna to relate to NVIDIA graphics cards, but some of the things that I'm gonna show in this video can also be transferred over to ATI graphics cards just not exactly like I'm doing them here. So the first thing that we're gonna start with is we're gonna play around with some settings in the NVIDIA control panel to actually allow the graphics card itself to function more optimally. And then after that, we're gonna overclock the GPU and see how much performance we can get out of it. So now without further ado, let's get to playing around with it. Okay, so the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is go down to your start menu and you're gonna to wanna to go in and search for the NVIDIA control panel here and go ahead and open that up. And then once it opens, we wanna play around with the manage 3D settings right here. So in here, there's two settings that we wanna change here. So we're gonna go ahead and scroll down until we find the first one, which is gonna be power management mode. Now this essentially is what controls like your fan speeds and the power that the card itself actually uses. Now for this, Obviously, if you wanna save power, then optimal power would be the one that you would go with. However, we want as much performance as we can get. So we're gonna change this to prefer maximum performance. And then from there, we wanna scroll down just a little bit until we see texture filtering quality right here. And for that, it's typically set to quality. And what I would recommend changing it to is to high performance. Now the high performance setting in texture quality, honestly, isn't gonna affect the way your games look. I haven't seen any noticeable difference between quality and high performance. However, this should give you a couple extra frames. And then once you make these settings, you're gonna scroll down here to where it says apply and just go ahead and hit the apply button. And it might take a minute here. And once the apply button disappears, you can go ahead and close the NVIDIA control panel. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna do is overclock the GPU. And while that might sound scary, there's really honestly very little risk to it. And I'll explain why while we're doing it. But before you can do that, you're gonna need to download a program called MSI Afterburner. Go ahead and Google it, get it downloaded and installed, and then let's get into it so we can actually start playing around with the settings on this GPU. All right, once you have MSI Afterburner installed, we're gonna go ahead and fire it up. And once it starts up, you should have your CPU and your memory frequency here, as well as your voltage or temperature. Now, your voltage may not be displayed, and honestly, that's really not important right now because we're not gonna be playing with voltage. As long as you leave the voltage stock, there's very little chance of you doing any harm at all to your graphics card. It's actually when you start playing with the voltage that you actually start having issues with possibly damaging your card. As long as you leave the voltage stock, then you should be fine. So what I like to do when I'm playing around with overclocking a graphics card is to actually use a program called Heaven. And it's a simple benchmark, but what we're gonna use it for is we're actually gonna use this to load down the CPU while we're playing around with the clock settings. Now the reason we're using Heaven on this right here is because we need something that's actually gonna load down the CPU while we're playing with the clock settings. Because usually your graphics card is sitting in a non-boosted mode where it's sitting in an 
idle, it doesn't go to its highest clock speed. So when we actually change the frequencies, it really isn't gonna do anything. We need to actually have something running in the background that will pull on the GPU and actually give the GPU a load so that while we're playing around with clock speeds, we can see those effects of those clock speeds in real time. So for that, we're gonna use Heaven, but you can use any program that you can actually run in the background while you play with MSI Afterburner in the foreground. Let me show you how to do it. So once you have this open right here, go ahead and make sure it's not, full screen is not selected, and then push the run button. Okay, while this program is firing up, go ahead and hit Alt Tab on your keyboard so you can actually display MSI Afterburner. And then give it a second for the program itself to start and we can start playing around with the frequencies. Okay, so the first thing that you're gonna wanna do before you start overclocking your GPU is to adjust the fan speed. Right now, it's sitting at 42%. And while we're playing with clock speeds, we wanna make sure that this is at 100%. So go ahead and uncheck auto, and then grab this little bar right here and slide it all the way up to 100 and hit apply. And I'm not sure if you can hear it in my microphone, but the fan speed is now sitting at 100%. So from there, we can actually start playing. What I would do is I would start with one or the other, the core clock or the memory clock. The first thing that I would do is jump the core clock by like 50. And then from there, once you make an adjustment, you go ahead and hit the apply button, and then you'll see up here how the actual frequency for the GPU has actually raised. Right now it's at 1382. So what I would do at this point is I would go up at 20 megahertz increments. So we're gonna go from 50, and we're gonna go to 70, and then we're gonna hit apply again, and then keep an eye on this right here when I hit apply. You'll see this one jump up by 20 megahertz. So we're gonna go ahead and hit apply, and you'll see that one jump up to 1402. Now I typically go in 20 megahertz increments, and you keep going until you push the GPU further than it can possibly go and the program itself crashes. Now that's our goal. Our goal is to actually crash the program so we can see the limit to our GPU. And then once you hit that limit, you just back it off a little bit until it runs stable. So let's see what we can do about crashing this program. All right, so we're gonna continue going up by 20 megahertz each time where we left off at 70. So we're gonna go ahead and go up to 90. And then we're gonna hit apply. And then as you can see, we jumped up another 20 megahertz. So now that from 90, we're gonna go ahead and jump up to 110. And essentially what you're gonna do is you're gonna to continue to make these jumps until you actually crash the program itself. And so we're at 110 now, so we're gonna go ahead and hit 130, and we're gonna hit apply. And then essentially we continue to do this process over and over again, going at 20 megahertz increments until the program finally crashes. And as you can see, we're already starting to get some really weird stuff happening. So I think we've actually gone over our limit. So we're gonna go from 130 to 150. And I bet you we're gonna crash the program here in a second. And there we go, the program crashed. And as you can see, the program just froze solid and eventually it's gonna crash back to the desktop. Um, sometimes it will, sometimes it won't. Ah, see this actually started going again. However, we can clearly see there's definitely some problems going on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this thing reset to defaults right here so it doesn't cause any other weird things to happen. So now we're gonna go back to our last stable overclock, which was 110 megahertz, and we're gonna play around with a little bit smaller numbers now. Let's do that now. Okay, so from here, we're gonna go ahead and go back to 110. We're gonna hit apply. That's gonna bring us up to 1442. And then from here, instead of jumping up by 20 megahertz, I'm gonna cut that in half. I'm gonna to go to 120 and see what happens. Just go up by 10 megahertz. We're gonna hit apply. So now we're at 1453. And then just watch it for a little bit. And as you can see, the program has already frozen. So it looks like 110 is our limit. In fact, this time it actually did close back to the desktop. So we're gonna go back to 110 and then hit apply and then go ahead and start the program back up again. And then same as before, you hit Alt-Tab to get your MSI Afterburner back. And then we're gonna sit here and wait for this program to load. So now, once we have a stable core clock, now we have to start playing with the GPU clock. So the same as before, I would jump up 50 megahertz. And essentially, you follow exactly the same pattern. You keep lifting this up by 20 megahertz at a time. 
and the program crashed. Again. Oh, you know why? My fan speed wasn't up. Okay, this is the reason why fan speed is important because when I set it to defaults before and then I put our overclock back on, I left the fan speed at default and the core actually skyrocketed in temperature. It got to about 10 Celsius higher than it was when we were overclocked before. So I'm gonna let this thing chill for a minute so the core clock will come back down and then we'll play around with the memory settings. All right, I have the core temperatures back down to a stable temperature, but this is a perfect example of making a mistake and why you need to have the fan speed set up to 100 when you're overclocking. We literally got temperatures almost 10 Celsius higher simply by leaving the fans at default. So now that the fans are back up, we're gonna go ahead and get back to playing around with the memory. So let's do that now. So like with the core speed, essentially all you do is you move this up, we're at 50 now, so we're gonna go ahead and move this thing up by another 20 Celsius. So we're gonna go 20, hit apply, and then we're gonna keep doing this until we start getting problems with our memory. And our memory problems are gonna be a little bit different than our core problems. Um, sometimes it will crash the program, but a lot of times what'll happen is you'll start seeing different um, aberrations within the image. So you have to actually watch it when you're doing memory. And if you start seeing things like flash or just weird things, you'll know it when you see it. it that's an indication that the memory is actually clocked too high. Now I went ahead and I've already done all the testing on this obviously. So I already have a saved overclock that is stable on this system. So that gives me 140 on memory and 110 on the core. And that right there actually runs pretty good. I went ahead and did all my benchmarking on that overclock before. Okay, so now that we have a stable overclock running in heaven, that doesn't necessarily mean that that's gonna be a stable overclock. You're gonna have to actually get into your games, the games that you play the most often, and just play around with them. If you start having weird crashes, then you might have to actually bring the core or memory clock back, respectively, depends on which one's causing your issues. For instance, currently right now, I'm running a core speed of 110 over stock. And when I was doing the testing for this video originally, I was able to get it stable at 120 megahertz over stock. Unfortunately, after halfway through my benchmarking, it started crashing in GTA 5. So I had to go back, I had to drop the core down a little bit, and then restart my benchmarking from the very beginning. So it was kind of a drag, but you know, I do it for you guys. So just keep in mind that if you are having problems in games, then take a look at your overclock. Your overclock might be what's causing it. And one thing that I would recommend doing is just setting like the memory back to zero and leave the core overclocked and see if the crashing goes away. If it doesn't, then that means it's not your memory causing the crashing. You can bring the memory back up and then bring the core down and then see if it continues to crash. And if it doesn't, then you know you can play around with that one. So that will kind of help to narrow it down a little bit. So now let's see what benefit this actually gave our e-waste gaming PC by looking at some of the benchmarks. The first benchmark we're going to look at today is Black Mesa. This is running at all defaults, which is 1920 by 1080. Any aliasing is turned on, and it's set to mostly high settings. And before the overclock, we got a 96.2 average frames a second with a 1% low of 63.3. And after overclocking, we got 103.1 frames a second average with a 66 FPS 1% low. So with Black Mesa, we actually got a pretty decent performance increase from 96 to 103. And the best part about it is it didn't cost us a dime. So the next game we're looking at today is CSGO. This one is also set to default settings. That's 1920 by 1080. We have anti-aliasing turned on and it's set to mostly high settings. Now in this one, we didn't see a huge performance increase. Unfortunately, we saw 88.7 average FPS on the stock configuration before the overclock. And after we overclocked it, we actually saw 88.6. So we lost 0.1% FPS. However, that's definitely within margin of error. So overclocking the GPU really didn't do anything for us in this game. And honestly, I think I know why. And I'm gonna go into that a little bit more at the end of the video. So the next game we're looking at today is Grand Theft Auto V. This game was set up to 1920 by 1080. We're running it on DirectX 11. Most of the settings were set to high and anti-aliasing was turned on. 
Before overclocking the GPU, we got an average FPS of 48.9 with a 1% low of 35.5. However, after overclocking the GPU, we got 49.5 FPS with a 1% low of 31.9. So in this case, our average FPS literally went up less than one frame per second, and it actually took a hit on the 1% low. So unfortunately, the overclock doesn't look like it helped this game much at all either. All right, the next game we're gonna look at today is Red Dead Redemption 2. This game here, we actually ran at 1280 by 720. We have the textures set to favor performance, the highest setting in favor performance, and we're using the Vulcan engine. And on this one, on the stock settings before we overclocked it, we got an average FPS of 35.4 with a 1% low of 19.4. And after overclocking, we got an average FPS of 34.1 with a 1% low of 20.3. Now on this one right here, the overclock might have helped a little bit because it actually, it did bring the average FPS down, but it also brought the 1% low up a little bit. So the GPU overclock actually kind of helped to get rid of some of the jitteriness in the game. The game ran a little bit smoother. However, the FPS was still fairly low and as you can see from the numbers, we actually lost over one FPS after the overclock. However, that is margin of error, so it's nothing to really be too concerned with. It would have been nice though to see a little bit bigger of a performance increase. But honestly, after seeing these test results, I don't think our GPU is what's limiting us here. I think our CPU is limiting us. And I'll go into that more in the closing. Okay, as with the other videos in this series, I'm gonna go ahead and run Heaven so we can compare it to some of the test results that we've gotten in the past. As before, Heaven was running at 1600 by 900 with the extreme preset. And factory, before we overclocked the GPU, we got 28.7 FPS with a score of 724. Now what I mentioned in a few videos back is that it would be really nice if we could see heaven break 30 frames a second. And luckily with our overclock settings, that's exactly what we did. We got an average of 30.8 with a score of 776. So overclocking the GPU definitely helped heaven. Unlike some of the other games, the GPU performance really did help this benchmark quite a bit. You know, we didn't seem like a lot going from 28 to 30. However, it was nice to see this thing actually over 30 frames a second. Okay, so as you can see from the benchmarks, it's kind of a mixed bag. You know, it helped in some areas and not so much in others. And I think the reason why is because if you look at some of the older games like Black Mesa, we actually got a fairly respectable increase in performance. However, in the other games like CSGO, GTA 5, and Red Dead Redemption, not so much. In fact, in some of them, it actually went down. But, you know, they're within margin of error, so it's really not that big of a deal. And the reason why I think that is, is I think this system right here, unfortunately, is hopelessly CPU bound. I don't think there's much more we can do with the FX processor that it has running in it. And that's why next week, we're gonna abandon the FX processor and we're finally gonna upgrade this thing to a Ryzen. So we're gonna go ahead and do a motherboard CPU and memory upgrade, and we're gonna see how that affects its performance. I think we're gonna see a pretty pretty big jump, but I guess you'll have to wait until next week to find out. So if you have any ideas on what you would do to upgrade this system, then please shout out in the comments below and let me know. Your idea might actually become a video. If this video was helpful to you, then please like this video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell icon so you can be notified of future videos. I do a new video every week. Oh, and hey, hey, before you go, check out a couple of these videos. Have a great day.